What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Unique Speaks. I'm over here talking about what I'm talking about because that's what your girl is all about. So you already know what you clicked on. You already saw the thumbnail and the title. So I'm not going to waste your time here. As you can see, we are in episode two, uh, What Will Keep Us From Heaven. Okay, this is a series. It is 10 days where we're going to be dialing into 10 sins that is mentioned in the Word of God. And I want to go ahead and speak that scripture over this episode. As y'all already know, which I must say, y'all, I um, I dropped the um, first episode on yesterday. And I'm telling you, I can just tell that the enemy does not want me to get this information out. It was just so much so much was just happening on yesterday and it just seemed like it just kept distracting me or not allowing me to produce what I need to produce on the video. So I'm just grateful that God gave me the strength and the strategy to push through it. But however, I want to say hello, hello, hello to all of you. I am so grateful for all of the great feedback that I received on the video i'm the it truly is a blessing i had the chance to read them but now i have the after i do this video i'm going to go back and engage with them even the more because some of the things that they were speaking about just hit even the more you understand what i'm saying and that is exactly why i say comment down below because you never know who is coming to watch the video but who is also jumping into that comment section what is on the inside of you will bless so many and the revelation that you may even receive from this video can bless so many and it blesses me and I'm just being I'm just being honest with you because we have to be encouraged by one another why because we all doing the same thing nobody is perfect we are in perfect okay imperfect people trying to live a righteous lifestyle and when we came into christ we knew it would be hard we knew it'd be difficult we knew that there would be challenges but if we stay in him he will stay in us and he will give us everything that we need to accomplish what is ahead of us so i want to just go ahead and just put that out there i just wanted to let y'all know i felt y'all i felt y'all and i appreciate i appreciate us getting together and doing what we need to do to open our mouths and speak the truth that is in the word of god okay so i did do a little quick cut right there because i was um pulling up the scripture on my phone but however y'all like i told y'all and yesterday it's not going to be that many edits if anything i'm definitely going to have scriptures you know coming across the screen because that is the main thing that's important about these videos is that i am just bringing illustration through the spirit of god amen that the holy spirit will guide me you know when i'm speaking that he will give that fullness that you can see exactly what we're doing and how we're flowing and how the manipulation has overcome our life in this modern time. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak about when my mama was, you know, growing coming up and I can't speak about when your mama was coming up. I'm talking about right now, you know, this generation, this season that I am experiencing as well with everyone else. Okay. So as you can see, I have the scripture on the on the screen and just like yesterday i added in that verse 11 because i felt like it was very very um potent to to share because not only do i want to shine light on the things that will keep us out of heaven but i also want to shine light on those who have traveled through these same things and what we done we have just turned away from them and we allowed the holy spirit to cleanse us so we can live or attempt and try daily to live a righteous life and if we can do it so can you and so i am just thankful that this opportunity has presented itself that you are in the room okay so let's start at verse 9 of 1 Corinthians, um, the 6th chapter, and it says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves, those who indulge in sexual sin, or who worship idols, or commit adultery, or are male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people none of these things will inherit the kingdom of god verse 11 some of you were once like that but you were cleansed you were made holy you were made right with god by the calling on the name of the lord jesus christ and by the spirit of our god 
And so I just want to let y'all know that, yeah, I already told y'all on yesterday's episode that I found myself in many of this, okay? But I'm so grateful to God that we have Jesus who died on the cross for all of us, okay? Our sins are on that cross. So we are redeemed from those things. That is not no longer our identity and God does not see us in the way that most people still see us because they don't see that this change has been made because this is not one of those moments where we could take a picture of the spiritual blessings that God does in our life, okay? So I hope you got your notebooks and your pens. I got mine and I'm telling y'all, I have about... Oh, Jesus, like five pages of notes, but I can guarantee you that I may not get through it all, but I am going to try my best to get the important parts out to you. Okay. So as you can see by the title of this video, we're in this series. Episode two is about idolatry. Okay. And I want to bring that to its fullness so we can go ahead and see stamped, denied on the enemy's forehead, okay? Because many of us are flowing in this way in so many different ways. And I just want to dial in on just a few of the idols that God brought to my attention that I want to bring to the light so we can try and do what we need to do with the strength of God to get past them and bring God to be back to be the center of our being, the center of everything about ourselves. All right, so idolatry. Let's just talk about the meaning of idolatry. Now, I did find this, and I believe it was the Oxen Dictionary, and you just Google it, you'll get the best de definition that you'll find as well. I'm not no person that's going to be saying this is the only definition that sticks. I'm not going to be that one. I'm, we're going to make this real simple, okay? Now, the dictionary says idolatry is the worship of idols, okay? And it gave me a second definition, and it says extreme admiration, love, or reverence for something or someone. Now, as we already know, if we belong to Christ, we are believers of Jesus Christ and, and our Heavenly Father, then we already know that our extreme admiration, our love and reverence should be to God. But however, we allow idols to take that placement. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so even the more now in modern times, so many other things have taken our focus off God. And what we don't realize that through those distractions, they are waiting, you know, to literally relinquish heartache, frustrations, stress, and just pure life hardship and all in itself. Just because Jesus is not there in the midst of it to guide us through, giving us strategy, giving us strength, and giving us all that we need, equipping us with knowledge, equipping us with an intellect that many people can go to school for and still don't even get. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what yet we find ourselves indulging in other things that we believe that will bring us these things that we're seeking in the world. And this is the where it all gets a little deeper. God is the only one worthy of worship. So we find ourselves worshiping things that we believe that will bring us comfort, that, that will give us security, that will bring us love or, you know, or bring us, you know, like completeness even. And none of those things last. You know, they're temporary. We will get our hands on a bunch of money. We get our hands on the new job, the new promotion, the marriage, the children. We get all of these different things in life, but yet we still feel a inner emptiness. We still feel like there's still that thing on the inside of us that's just not filled up to the top. And everything that we try to fill it with, okay, everything we try to fill it with is actually still on E leaving us on E. It's almost like going to the gas station to put gas in your car, but you only put air in it. So you thought you was pumping gas, but you was pumping air. So you crank up the car and you still don't move. Nobody, you nowhere. Same analogy I want to bring when it comes to having Jesus or, you know, having the things of this world. Hit the turn page, y'all. All right, so instead of running to God, we seek comfort in other things that seem to be easier or comforting to satisfy our uncertainty in something or someone or our longings desire go unmet. When we believe, if I just had some money, if I just had that right degree, if I just had the right career, if I just had that business, the right skin, bigger butt, bigger boobs, more friends, more followers, more likes, more comments, more achievements, and, and more, more experiences, then, 
then I'll be happy. Now, I know many of us have said this in life, whether you are in Christ now and you done got to the other side of that thing or you are still saying that today. OK, and many of us will find ourselves saying that because we have not found that fulfillment yet. Remember, we will fill it with all these things that we think that will make us happy, but we are still going to walk away on E. We have replaced God with what we focus the most on in this world. And this is a mentality thing here. These idols dull our spiritual hearing and it heartens our hearts to the things of God. Those moments when we don't want to lean into the word, those moments where we would like, you know, don't want to do what God is putting on our, our minds and our hearts to do, the vision that he shows us or whatever that instruction was, we will literally lean on the other things that will get us to where we're trying to go faster instead of what God is trying to push us to do. Now, there are others like myself found that great hope of repentance. And that is what this series is all about. Of us bringing the awareness of what these sins are so we can go to God and repent and ask for help. Okay, that's the key thing. To ask for help because we all need help in different areas of our life. And these areas are attached to the sin that will keep us from the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is heaven. Okay. So here, we many of us, just like myself, have found out that through repentance, like the Bible states, that God has raised us up. And we are those who will challenge the faulty theology of this world. Okay? And like I said, many times I have seen the lies come across videos. I have seen them on posts. I have seen justifications of lifestyles. That will keep us from the great reward that God says he has for us. And so even those who of us who said that I've done everything that I needed to do to get to that great reward, we come to realize that these things can keep us from it. So I am just praying that God will definitely do what needs to be done, which we all know that he will, you know, get this message to those who will lend over their ear to hear what God is saying to the churches, because soon and very soon we're going to see the king. And I'm telling you, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We all are going to see this great day. And it's going to be in that moment that we're going to wish that we would have found out a, a, the, the truth of what our lives were all about. And then we would not be at fear of getting the words from Jesus saying, depart from me. I never knew you. And that's not the words that I want to receive. So I want to go ahead and list a couple of more scriptures to back up what I am saying even the more because right now I am speaking on terms of idolatry and there are many scriptures in the Bible that will express even the more of why God re is literally trying to sway us away from them and ensuring that we don't bring them where we're going and that we do not focus our minds on the things of this world. So now you have your scriptures. So again, I hope you're taking notes and, you know, writing down information that you yourself can go in and research so you can see and find yourself where you can get more and more aware and ignited to go right back to Christ and repent of your sins and just turn away from those things and just don't do them anymore. I wanted to dial into five types of idols, and I hope that I don't hold too much of your time, but I really believe that you will find it very, very interesting, even the more, because I'm going to try my best to bring as much example and illustration of all of them. So the first one I have is self. And what I found is that we should know that we exist to glorify Christ and reveal his love to a hurting world. But we easily slip into self-elevation mode. And I want to go into about what that looks like. So many of us, we experience in this life conditions our mind it, where it's beneficial for us to kind of look out for ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? And where when disaster hits the world or disaster hits our communities... More than us are affected, but the first ones that we tend to care about is ourselves. 
And we can also even bring this into our families and our households. Like the whole entire family in this one house is affected by what is going on. But however, we can only think about ourselves and how we are affected by what's going on instead of how others around us are being affected as well. So we don't show up properly. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what I mean when a lot of times when you when you hear me say, how are you showing up in a situation? Because if you are all about self idolatry, then that's... That is the thing where your mind is going to go. You're going to just think about your feelings. You're going to think about how you was hurt. You're going to think about how you deserve an apology or whatever the case may be. And just like that, we got many more people in the neighborhood, in our communities, in our state, in the world that is affected by many things that we all are affected by. But we only think about ourselves. We don't even think about how are ways that we can bring a help. How can we bring something to them in a form of finances? Or it could be just knowledge, wisdom. And, a, you know, it could just be a listening ear. It could be a hug. It could just be in any way. But since we're so self-absorbed, we miss out on the opportunities and see it that way. The second idol is security. It says, this is where we become challenged, okay? When idols arise from really good things or necessary things. You know, those things that we really feel like we have to do. I gotta go to school and to get that degree. Oh, I got to go to this course. I gotta go to that class. Or I, 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 I gotta get this job and I gotta make this type of money because we that's how we pay for our bills. That's how we keep our lights on. And that's how we're able to function as a family and be able to go here and there and do different things but yet we have now taken away God when he says in his word and I'm going to put this I'm going to put the scripture in the screen that he is our provider we, we, we literally need for nothing he literally has already provided as well as equipped us but since the world in this modern day has conditioned our minds to believe that we have to move in a certain way to achieve the things that are like everybody else or that we believe that is substantial to hold that thing up. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to I just want to speak about the one thing that I seen that has evolved in this um in this time and I want to say probably in the past few years and I just haven't noticed but I have been noticing the solar panels, you know what I'm saying? And so solar panels actually get the energy from the sun that provides the electricity and energy that runs through the house. And that was somebody, who hallelujah, that was somebody with a gift and a talent that realized that we have everything that we need but yet we're paying the power peoples we're paying the power companies and we, 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 this is what we're doing instead of you know drilling our own um well so we can have water all of these different things we actually have access to especially if we're homeowners but yet we just don't know how to tap into them because we are held back by the idols and the mentality that the world has created in us That we have to get the job, or we got to have this type of this, or we got to have this over here just to be able to move. But with God, all things are possible. And he gives us the strategies, and he gives us everything we need to obtain to live the abundant life that he meant for all of us. Let's talk about even relationships. So this can be our children, our spouses, our friends. Most times we place others before God, and then we are the ones who feel depleted because those people cannot pour back into us in the same amounts that we have poured into them sometimes, and especially in such a way where only God can refill and restore that area that we just poured out. And, and when sometimes when we pour out into others in such a way, it's because we want them to show up a certain type of way. Like we'll begin to now make things transactional instead of being intentional of, of having these people in our life. I wanted to dial in on this just a little bit more. I wrote down, I said, we seek these relationships to feel our happiness and deep desires. There are oftentimes we feel we can't do anything without them. 
In this, this is what we do. We do not fully enjoy the relationship in a healthy way or manner. You know what I'm saying? Like this relationship was a give and take situation where we're giving unto each other the wisdom that is only that lies within each other because of God. And if we interchange them, we will be better in Christ, better resourceful in Christ where he can use the great things that produce out of this relationship. Oof. That is beautiful. And I'm telling you, I found my person and I'm so grateful to God for bringing her in my life because I'm telling you, when I get into those placements, I know where to go to. And yet I'm coming to her to get what I need. But I, that the same time, that energy reciprocates because the intentions are there and God is going to use the relationship for what he connected it for in the first place. So in these times, we begin to misuse those that we are in relationship with. We take them for granted. And so what we, we tend to do is we miss the value that they are meant to bring to us in our life. And we misuse them. We hurt them and destroy even who they are for us. The fourth one is success. Okay, success. When we are when we are asking, what do we do for a living? Many of us are triggered immediately to pull out a laundry list, okay, of all the accomplishments, degrees, and promotions, and our, our job status. And sometimes we'll go as far as making how much we make a year, just so we can feel validated, and we can feel approved, or we could be respected. We really feel like we have to have certain things in life, possessions even, before we feel like we're important enough. But in Christ, we're already very, very important. Because we fall, we fail to realize that our identity and uh, it, it literally is found in Christ alone. We don't see that scripture says in Christ, we're cherished, we're chosen, and we're empowered men and women of God. And we're handcrafted for an eternal purpose, not just for those purposes that fulfills us and our households. Like if we don't get out of that mentality, we're just not going to be useful to God when he needs us, right? God is always searching, looking for a willing vessel that he can use the, to pour out the blessings that belong to someone else. But are we capable to do that or are we just that selfish? Success is also where we seek to increase our value through validation and reaching goals and possessions. Hence, the social media posts we see on daily, despite the justifications we feel that we don't do it for that. But we got to get to the root of why you even posting stuff like that anyway. If God giving you a vision to, to do this or that, then just do that and allow the glory of God to, to, to manifest here instead of us feeling like we got it back. Oh, congratulations. Oh, great job. Oh, oh, you did it. You know what I'm saying? We should be able to just do that for ourselves. Why we can't keep that into our own little realm right there with God, Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Okay. Because it took all three of them to do what you had done. Do you feel it? Yes. But in the success where well, we will lose our mindset. Last one is comfort, okay? Comfort, comfort. And I, I know these are idols that I am listing you. I know you're probably like, I did not even know these things were idols. But remember the definition. These are things that we put before God. These are the things that we have substituted for God. Instead of getting into the word, we go and lean on our own understanding and we go after the happiness and the joy and the success and whatever else that the world has shown us how to obtain. But the word of God tells us how to obtain it too. But instead of doing that, yeah, that's how idol idolatry is created. So the fifth one is comfort. And I looked down, I said, often we elevate our comfort over obedience. Okay, and I want to give some examples of comfort over obedience because many times that, like I said, God has created us to not just serve ourselves, but to serve others. We all have gifts and talents and we should be operating in those gifts and talents to service the kingdom of God and others. And God is the one who be glorified, not us. But in that comfort, this is what I wrote down. I have remain comfortable in our home instead of crossing the street to initiate a conversation with a neighbor. Because see, God wants us to be helpful to one another. But how do we, how can we be helpful if we don't even take the time to engage in conversation? But we're too comfortable. We're going to sit on our porch and just look. Yeah. <laughs> 
but this is comfort for us. Even comfort in sleeping or resting, instead of making use of our time to produce a service, God can use and others can benefit from. Yeah, I'll just sleep in a little bit longer. Oh, no, I ain't going to show the church open time. I'm going to let the, I, I'm supposed to be singing today, but I ain't want to sing. So I'm just going to wait before I go in there. We, we get comfortable and then things are just, just stay dormanted within us. Comfort will have us indulging in entertainment instead of addressing the elephants that may be in the room. Okay, we'll find our phone on, on, you know, find ourselves in the phone on social media instead of saying hello to our children or addressing the issues that's going on in the house or and we'll, we'll engage in video games or movies or whatever that we find comfort in instead of actually handling real life situations that we are all facing with and others are being affected by as well but this is that selfishness and the idols that we find ourselves comfort will have us also allow our children to do what they like instead of training them up properly to face the world we are experiencing right now you know this is where you get a lot of the teen um pregnancies and you get your young men's are going out you know creating babies or you know or or, or you know um running the streets and becoming drug dealers and getting involved in gangs and all of these things because as parents our eyes are just in that in that comfort mode of whatever we're doing, we can't pay attention to the signs our children are showing us that, hey, um, you, since you ain't going to give me no attention, I'm going to find it somewhere else. And I've, and I've already been finding it somewhere else. And now my atti their attitudes are changing. Now their head it got a little twist to it. You know what I'm saying? We got to be able to catch them before it gets too late. But if we find ourselves in the comfort, indulging in the things that bring us comfort, we're going to miss it. And time is constantly moving. You know, Jesus is the only antidote, okay, that is going to bring these types of fulfillments in this life. That we're not going to find it in the money. We're not going to find it in the possessions. We're not going to find it in the relationships. We're not going to find it in validation from others. We're just not going to find it in anything in this world. And I want to go ahead and pop up John 14 and 6 because we cannot get to the Father without the Son. Everything we need is in Jesus. And this even the more brings the insight of why and how so many others are trying to take Jesus out. You know, Jesus is not, he was man-made or Jesus is not the actual son of God or whatever the lies that are on the streets where we only, we pray to God, but we don't even say in the name of Jesus because it's Jesus is the only reason why you can even open your lips and open and, and put out a prayer to God. Like we have to know these things so we can get our life straight. And this is just an awareness video so we can see ourselves in different ways. Where we have replaced God with something or someone. Okay. We're giving reverence. We're giving focus. We're giving our love. We're giving all of our, our energy and strength into something that it does not pour back into us. And I want this to be that moment where we say, Hey, you know what? This is what I've been doing and I want to turn away from this. I want to go back to Christ and this is your moment to do it. You, 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 you don't have to just lean on that one time that you said Jesus come into my life. I say it on most occasions now because there's many times that if I fall into sin, I'm like, Jesus, you come stay in my life. Come back into my life because I know at that very moment that I fell into that sin, that very moment that I put an idol before him. That it separated me from him. And so we sometimes we have to reposition God right back into our life. We have to reposition where Jesus is and how he is the one who has already walked this earth. And he knows exactly what you're going through. He knows how that flesh rise. He's been here and he's done that. And he wants you to be just as successful as he was. And I do too. I do too. And that's the reason why I'm breaking this truth. That's the reason why I'm dropping these videos. That's the reason why God has led me to do this entire series. Because we have others that are in the world that do not know about this. And they were going to miss their own salvation. And no, I cannot save anyone. No, I cannot, you know, just force anyone. But I'm just trying to let you know. And they, that's all I can do is just let you know that this is what the word says. And if we do not get these stuff out of our spirits, out of our, out of our lives, it's going to cause us to miss the mark. And those words 
are going to break our hearts more than the things that we thought we, we needed possession of. And when Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. You get sent to hell. No, no, no. That's not what I want for myself, my family, nor you. And I don't have to know you to love you. And so therefore, I pray that you get into the word and I pray that this has enlightened you in any such a way that you will go back in and you will do your own research as well. And you can see how these things in your life has now taken precedent. They are taking priority over the one person that you need. And that's God. I love y'all so much, but y'all already know God loves you the most. Jesus loves us the most. The Holy Spirit loves us the most. And all three of them are, are one in us. And that will help us to continue to run this race all the way to the end. Because remember, soon and very soon, Jesus is coming back for his bride. And we got to be ready. Let's get ready. All right. So I'm going to see you all in the next video. Okay. Y'all stay blessed. Stay kept by the Lord. And repent. Okay. It's not... There's nothing else to lean on. Peace.